Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Hi guys and welcome to part four of the CSL replica build. Now, as you can probably see, we are in the new Recaro. So in the previous video, we went over the handling and I was on the way to go pick these up. We bought these used off of another forum member. And as you can see, they look absolutely awesome. And the feel in the car as well is just, it's such an improvement. And the thing is with seats is it's, it's a real key ingredient to get in the right position out of the car because the standard seats are obviously designed to be sold for people who are maybe five foot and you know you get the high you don't always get the aggressive support like this that you want and the reason for that is not a lot of people want to climb in and out of a car you know like you're climbing into a cupboard so they do have to make compromise on the support and oh they are just so good so we're going to go over on this video how i fitted them what i went through with the uh, the install and what modifications i had to make to the base plates on these so enjoy so as it says i bought them used uh, if any of you follow my project thread on the m3 cutters forum you'll see that the base plates were quite a mess now the base plates are the adapter between these seats because these are actually from a lotus Aura s i believe and the base of the car and they don't bolt straight in so the various manufacturers OMPs are the one I've got here and to be honest with you I didn't think they fitted that well I had to machine the brackets a little bit because it was putting pressure on the bolts at an angle I just didn't like so I wanted everything to be perfect so we put the uh, the seats in did a trial fit and we ended up going out for a drive and me and my good friend Matt he came over today helped me lift them in and out because the standard seats with all the adjustments in them are really heavy so I'd strongly suggest if you have got two people it makes a big difference to be able to lift the, the standard one in and out but these ones obviously a lot lighter no motors in them so really easy just to pop in and out of the car so to start fitting the seats be really straightforward you just need to put the seats all the way backwards and then undo two bolts at the front which are under two little caps i think there are 16 mil from memory and then move the seat all the way forward and undo the two at the back and that way the seat will just literally come out of the car you will have a wiring harness plug on there so disconnect that but before you do any of that make sure that you disconnect the battery from the car all you need to do is just disconnect the negative lead it just stops you potentially getting any airbags going off or obviously setting any lights up on the dash now for me it's not too bad i'm still trying to get my head around input but if i did get any issues with the airbag lights i could reset those providing nothing was damaged so once the bolts are undone from the seat it only takes a minute if that you then unplug the yellow harness plug under the seat and now the harness plug runs the heated seats, all the motors for forward, backwards, up and down, and the seatbelt pretensioner. And what the seatbelt pretensioner is, is in the event of an accident, when the uh, crash is detected, it will pull all the slack out of the seatbelt. I think it's something like an inch or two that comes out of the seatbelt. And that essentially is the only one, well, it was on mine anyway, that will trigger the ABS light if you don't reconnect it. So if you're gonna run full harnesses, which I'm not planning to do, you will need to either resist to that out or plug up IMPA and tell it to ignore the pretensioners. Otherwise you'll have that horrible light on the dash, which if you're anything like me, it will just drive you nuts being on all the time. So once that's uh, all out of the car, you'll notice that the plug can simply be split apart. Really nice little design and all the motor plugs will come out. The only thing that's permanently wired in is the pretensioner. There's no way of removing that from the plug. You'd have to cut it. So this is the important bit. Before you remove the battery or disconnect the battery from the back, you need to jack the seat up. You need to take it up about an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half away from the base setting. And the reason that is, is that plug will not slide under the rail. So you can get it all out of the car, go to remove it and think, oh, I've got to cut the loom or put it back in the car and jack it back up. So we jacked it back up, took the plugs out 
and then that was it. It was just a case of then transferring the pretensioner over to the new seat, and now I was left with a plug that just had the pretensioner wire in it. It didn't have the heated seats, it didn't have any of the motors, because obviously, and unfortunately, I haven't got the heated seats on these, so absolutely no need to put those in. So that's that side of things finished. With that done, it's then move on to the passenger side. Same again, jack it up about an inch, just so that you can get the plug under the seat rail without having to chop the original loom. But where it's a little bit different on the passenger side, you have something called an occupancy sensor. And this is something I hadn't worked with before, so I did a bit of research into it. And again, if I've got this wrong, feel free to comment and correct me. But what the occupancy sensor does is when you've got a passenger in the passenger seat, it livens up the dashboard airbag and it livens up the airbag in the passenger door. If you haven't got a passenger in there and you haven't crashed, those will not come off. So the dangers of not having the occupancy sensor working correctly are that if you are in a crash, your passenger's not gonna have airbags. So it's certainly something you need to do a bit of thought about, but there is a solution and they sell something called an occupancy sensor. It's about eight to 10 pounds on eBay. And what that does is it tricks the car into thinking that someone is in the passenger seat all the time. So there's no dash lights, but the flaw to it is if you end up having a bump, even if it's not a very serious one and you don't have a passenger in the car, all of your airbags are going to go off in the front as if you have got a passenger in there. So for me, it was either not have the occupancy sensor working properly, which meant that if I was in a crash, you would end up with your passenger not having the airbags, or in the other situation, if you're in a crash and you didn't have a passenger, your airbags would go off anyway. So for me, my passenger's safety is the most important thing. If I had to put a new dash in it for being an idiot or a new door card, so be it. I wouldn't want a passenger in there that's not protected correctly. And these seat belts are designed to obviously have the standard airbags, we're not running harnesses. So for me, I went with the occupancy sensor. And it's just a case of unplug the occupancy sensor from the standard seat, it's just clipped into the bottom. And you plug in the, the uh, I think it's like a resistor inside of it that just makes the car think that there is a passenger in there. So you do need the original occupancy sensor module and you just unplug the loom which runs into the mat of the car. But I'll put a little video up of that now and you can see I just tie wrapped it to the original seat so that I haven't got to worry about it flapping around underneath. And just trying to make it as OEM as possible because my seats obviously haven't got the fix in there for the occupancy sensor to go in. You might be able to cut them open and put an occupancy sensor uh, mat in there but I'm going to risk wrecking a Recaro's? I don't think so. So uh, reinstall is just the same as the removal, it's just a case of bolt those four seat bolts back in and obviously make sure they're torqued up, you don't want them coming loose, it's the last thing you need. And then we went for a drive, so the first drive felt amazing but we did encounter a small problem, they were so low that I couldn't get the steering wheel in the right position, it was like loo -loo, driving along so I thought these have got to come back out again. I need to put some spaces in them. And being six foot two, I always struggled to get the perfect seat position because it's always too high. But for once, I'd actually made something too low. I was driving along and it felt like my arm was on the armrest at an angle. This didn't work. So I said to Matt, I've got to take them out again and I've got to build some spaces. So I fabricated some spaces, which were only done in the garage, absent turn aluminium. So what I'm going to do in the winter is get some off to a machine shop and get them properly made. But for the time being, they're absolutely perfect. Now we've set the height up. I went up about 12, 13 mil, I think it was. And it's just given me that point where my eyesight is on the top of the dash, which is what I wanted. Because at the end of the day, it's great having a low seat position. It looks really cool. But if you can't see what you're doing with the car, especially if you're having any sideways fun, I want to be able to see all angles, not buried inside the cockpit. So I'm glad we did that. And for me, it's absolutely perfect. It's probably sitting around 25 mil, 30 mil lower than standard. So quite an improvement over the stock seating position. But it's that hold you get in your shoulders. So we'll go now and take on some back roads and obviously join me along for the blast. Casino, me, which is what I wanted. I wanted the car ready to go up there and 
I'll let the cat out of the bag on this one. Because of the corrosion I had on here from the old leaky original mirror where the fluid come out, and obviously Mirror John got me a replacement one, so I haven't got to worry about it happening again, but it's like brake fluid, so it's damaged uh, some of the trim, which is, looks like it's just reacted. So what I need to do is take it all off, sand it back, and then obviously repaint it. And rather than just repainting it in this slug, I don't know what the color code is, I'm gonna upgrade it and go silver gray. So the full steering will be silver gray, obviously not the horn, and all the side trims, the dash trims, and I'm gonna get rid of the SMG badge, not because I'm ashamed of it before anyone says it, I just don't like it, it just looks a bit cheesy. So I'm gonna get rid of that, fill in the holes, and then yeah, hopefully the interior will be finished. Again, nice, lovely, twisty little road. And the seats are just doing their job. I don't feel that, again, I'm resting on that center console, I'm resting on the door, I'm just held in by the car. And obviously, harnesses, again, will greatly improve this because it'll keep your upper body in the seat. But I can't be dealing with messing around with all the uh, back of the car, trying to get everything ready. No rear seats. The idea of this car is it's a fun weekend car, but it's still practical. So if I did want to take friends out in it, I can done. Although I've only ever used the rear seats once, um, but it's nice to have that option there. And even for those that are going to be following the channel later in the year, we've obviously got the Renault Sport Clio, which is going to be the all out absolutely stupid. Don't want to drive it more than 10 minutes, but for those 10 minutes, it will be amazing. So as always, guys, not a great amount of detail on this. It's quite a straightforward job. Hopefully, a few of you find it interesting, like the watch. But we've got a few more bits. We'll do a rundown on the whole car. Do a nice video of our drives and some good roads back in the Cotswold, which is where I've been from for the last couple of years. So hopefully, we'll have some good footage. And I think we're going to have some pretty exciting stuff this year. Um, so if you are enjoying the video, and obviously you can put up with my irritating voice, give us a like and a subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video, guys.